the leader of the European Research Group, Jacob Rees-Mogg. What do you make of this idea? Well, I think it's a mistake and potentially a very costly one because we would be into a new multi-annual financial framework, a new budget set without the UK having any vote or any veto, very unlikely to maintain our, our rebate. And money is scarce and you have to decide, should we give this pot of money to the European Union or should we use it to help make the universal credit work? And these are the decisions government has to think about. Potentially financially costly, politically costly? Uh, politically particularly costly, the government's argument for the implementation period that it has accepted was that the EU takes two years to introduce a new rule and therefore any rule in the pipeline we would have had our say on at some point. I think it's a very good argument but it was at least what the government was putting up. If we extend it beyond two years then the EU will be making rules in which we have had no say at all. So it is the vassal state redoubled. But if it somehow diffuses some of the anxiety of the Northern Ireland backstop by providing more time to try and make sure there's a trade agreement so there's no need for the backstop, good idea. Well, but it doesn't even do that because the backstop remains. And with Parkinson's law, work expands to fill the time available. If you just extend the time on and on and on, uh, you make the backstop just as likely at the end of that period, rather than thinking that suddenly, a few months after the date it was meant to have ended, it would all be solved. I think they need to crack on with it, work a bit harder, and get a solution, and button up the deal earlier rather than later. But here we are, people like you have probably been waiting to leave the EU for, I don't know, 30, 40 years or whatever. What difference does one or two more months make? I don't think I had a particularly strong view as a nine-year-old, though I may have done. Uh, it, it, it's not that issue, it's that the process has been set in motion. There was two years to agree the withdrawal agreement under um, Article 50 of the Treaty on the European Union. That is all set out in a very clear way, in a perfectly reasonable way for the government to stick to. They erroneously, mistakenly accepted a sequencing that has put uh, the government negotiations in a weak position throughout. And now, in a weakened position, they seem to think that if they kick the can down the road, that position might get stronger. It won't. So. For you, it is not just about money or politics, it's about trust. That's a very good way of putting it. It's about, does the government really want to leave the European Union? Are they actually committed to doing this properly? And have they managed to negotiate competently? What are the prospects, do you think, of Mrs May being able to secure backing for any extension to transition? Because again and again we hear people say, oh, Mrs May will never be able to do that, she'll never get it through the Commons, and yet, again, and again, she does. Not quite again and again. She got the Withdrawal Act through the House of Commons. So far, nothing else has gone through the House of Commons. And whatever is agreed needs to come through in a withdrawal implementation bill, and that may be quite a difficult piece of um, parliamentary manoeuvring. Do you think there's any prospect of this being agreed in extension to transition? Well, if you talk to people who backed Remain, you seem to find that they're as reluctant to accept this as I am. So it's not a case of your sceptics opposing this, it's a case of it being deeply opposed across the Parliamentary Conservative Party. In the past 24 hours, we have seen a row over transition, we have seen a row over the nature of the meaningful vote, and we've seen a row in effect in Brussels where they've decided there's no point having a November summit. Is this now actually becoming a question of leadership, specifically Mrs May's leadership as the person who's been meant to be charting a course through this? Well, history will always judge the quality of leadership on the outcomes that it achieves, but I don't think there's any immediate pressure on the Prime Minister. Really? Why not? Uh, well, I think people want to change in the negotiation. Many people, my side of the argument, would like to get to a Canada-style agreement, that is to say free trade without uh, tariffs or quotas, which has been offered by the European Union for Great Britain, and we need to extend that to include Northern Ireland. That should be the main focus of the negotiations, and I would encourage the Prime Minister to move in that direction. But you and people like-minded have been saying for weeks now that the Prime Minister must pivot to some sort of Canada, Super Canada, fragilistic deal or whatever it is. Um, she's had resignations from her cabinet, she's got through the party conference, continuing pressure now, absolutely no sign she's going to dump checkers, indeed only yesterday she said checkers is still alive. Um, alive is a very uh, broad term, isn't it? It may be on a life support machine, but the show the proof that she can change her mind is in this addition to the transition period, that she's changed her mind in that direction, which my mind is the wrong direction. I'd like to see her change her mind in the right direction, but it does say, show some flexibility in her thinking. Okay, Jacob Rees-Mogg, thanks um, Thank very, very much, much. Uh, for your time. And